Blue Skies means fun days. Helping skydivers with tips and techniques about safety, training and fun jumping from those who know. Hi and welcome to Blue Skies Fun Days. The world not only needs more riggers, but as I explored this subject with master rigger Derek Thomas, the world needs more competent riggers. Somewhere along the way, a lot of poor rigging work is taking place, and that is not good for the sport, and it's certainly not healthy for the individual. Well, I don't know about more riggers. I mean, uh... I certainly think we need some uh, more qualified and quality riggers, that's for sure, which is pretty much why I started this academy, was to try and raise the bar of those that get started. Uh, there's, um, unfortunately, there's a world of piss poor riggers out there. I've been uh, a second generation skydiver, second generation rigger, second generation manufacturer. I started packing my dad's chute when I was eight, probably in 66 or 67. I uh, started jumping myself in 75. I was making skydiving equipment with my family uh, back in England for many, many years. Uh, became a, a BPA advanced rigger. Finally moved to the US in 83. Uh, took over Sun Path, uh, built the javelins, designed lots of pieces, brought it up. Lost that in divorce, but those things can happen. And. Um, I still had the old Sun Path building, which was empty for quite some time. And eventually I needed to do something with it. I really didn't want to get back into the rig manufacturing business or stuff. So skydiving and rigging has been really, really good to me. So I, you know, I, I figured maybe I would give it back. You know, just paying it forward or giving it back, whichever way you want to look at it. So I started the school and uh, I have some very, very good friends of mine who, who instruct with me who are exceptionally good at what they do. And I have 50, 60, nearly 60 years of education in this stuff. So I'm trying to spread it around and get it, get it out there. It is a problem, uh, not a problem, but I think that's the reason that the, um, the odd schools that are, are out here, out there, uh, are really developed because people were not able to get their local rigger to put them through an apprenticeship. For, you know, and then typically Australia, just we'll say Australia, the odd master riggers they have are too busy to train anybody. And maybe they don't want to train anybody because they don't want people to come and steal their work. That's the real reason that a few of these schools have, have developed or uh, come up. That's kind of why I, I got started in, in, with this. And now I have, uh, in, I've been in conversations with the Australian Parachute Federation, uh, the Dutch Federation, the French, uh, but I'm trying to sort some stuff out with the English um, to where the people can come and train with me and then go back and take whatever exams they need to in their country and then they can become the riggers that, that those countries need. And then hopefully, for me, I guess the fact that most of those people know me and they know my school and the school is going so strong. I'm the busiest DPRE in, in the United States. So, and the school is getting a reputation. Uh, I don't really have to do any advertising. I mean, my classes, courses are, full or over full most of the time and um, so we're just you know we're trying to get people out there that, that have a, a better education or starting from a better place is what I try to do I want to I, want to, I, I always tell them when you leave my school you will be a rigger you'll be an inexperienced rigger but you will be a rigger not just another human rigger riggers ticket I mean I don't want to speak ill of other people, whatever, but there's definitely schools out there that are, are set up. I mean, I've, I've some of my very best friends have come to me and, and tell me, ask me, how much does a rigging, rigging, rigging course cost? I tell them, they're like, well, dude, that's expensive. And I said, yeah, well, you get a lot of stuff. And they said, well, how long does it take? I said, it's three weeks. Three weeks? I can't do three weeks. It's so and so and so and so, so they'll do it for me in a week. And I said, well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a week's worth. And so there are people out there that are, that are slamming them through 
getting them a ticket so they can, uh, a lot of them, a lot of them want, want a ticket just so they can go and work on military contracts. Um, but I, I, I won't do that. If, if you come to my school, you're going to do the school and you're going to become a rigger and, and that's it. You know, and I have a, you know, I have the best facility. It's the old Sunpath building. I've got 15,000 square feet. So I got all the packing area I need. I've got, I don't even know how many rigs we have. Probably, I would estimate 30 or 35 rigs that are very indifference. Obviously we've got all the popular ones and some are not so popular. And that's just in the, in the ram air and back types and take the seat types and the, and the, and the, and the, and the uh, chest types. So, I have uh, more machines than anybody else, I would imagine, because I have eight, eight stations for canopies, and I got seven stations for container work, and I got five harness machines. So we have lots of machinery, we have lots of uh, stuff for them to work on. Um, so, and it's just, you know, I took some path from being a, a tiny little company to being the biggest company in the world for a period of time. And I took Thomas Sports Equipment from where it was to being internationally known with the teardrop. And so that's exactly what I do with the school. I don't, I don't play to be second best. <laughs> that's the way it is. A lot of the riggers that are out there are unable or unwilling to continue their education. Some of them will, maybe some of them even want to, but maybe there's not the work at the drop zone, or maybe they're at a drop zone that already has riggers that don't, don't want to let them do anything or help them get their education. So there's a lot of them out there that, that when they do get something to do, they're, they're, not, they're not fully trained or they, they don't remember or, or they fudge their way through instead of asking questions, going looking for it in books, doing whatever they need to do. Some people get to become riggers and they're just generally a messy, shaggy person. So they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't see the the quality of what's required, you know, they just, it's like the, whatever they wear or, what, or what, however they act or whatever they do, they're just not really all the way in there, you know what I mean? They, they, they're just a little lazy, a little sloppy. And that's just, you know, you, you're gonna get that no matter what, you, that, that's just personalities. I think the more, com the more common the equipment or the more common use there is, uh, you'll find more problems with those because there's just by law of averages, you're going to get those kind of things. You know, so many rigs these days are using a, 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 an RSL or, or a, a MARD, so the, the, the actual ripcord is not the actual pin. You'll very often get the people, they'll, they'll put the pin which is attached to the RSL and then forget to put the ripcord pull on there so if you had a total malfunction you pull your ripcord it ain't doing shit oh excuse me it's not doing anything <laughs> so uh yeah those i see stuff like that um and then just you know, you'll see shoddy repairs I, 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 you'd be surprised how many times you see people do a line set and they put the they put the the b's and d's on in the wrong direction the common things I see like that, poor, poor packing techniques on reserves, you see them shoddy, they, they, they want to just throw it in there and, and if, if the pilot shoe's hanging half out or, or not pulled down all the way, they don't seem to care that, that, that that's good enough. It, anything that's good enough already means it's not right. So again, goes back to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to raise the bar of those who are starting and instead of the ones that are out there. On a personal note, I train a lot of military riggers. I get a lot of military personnel come through my course. They're like, this is amazing. I don't, where is this, why haven't we been here before? Why isn't everybody coming here? You know, we, we don't get any of this education in the military. And then those poor guys, they, they get, a, they get a, a, an FAA riggers ticket while they're in, and now they get out in the civilian world and they, they don't have a clue what's going on. They, they're only used to dealing with the military equipment they have. And this isn't all of them, of course, but it's, it's, it's a, it's definitely an ongoing uh, syndrome. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, a lot of, a lot of poor reserve pack jobs, a lot of things exposed that shouldn't be, and, and silly mistakes. Like, like I said, how do you, you know, a mod, you know, you get, you get your sky hook and, and you have to put the, 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 the green, the green loop in the green holder. You got to put the red loop in the, in the red holder and then hook it up to the, to the hook and tie it on. And, 
you'd be amazed how many of those I see come in for repacks and the red lanyard's hanging off or the, the ripcord hasn't been attached okay. or they've put it in, they, they haven't put it in the, in the, the, the holders and they're just laying there. It's always silly stuff, you know, it's avoidable stuff. Not necessarily always catastrophic, but just stupid, well, unfortunately. If you are now thinking about becoming a quality rigger, either for income or to make the skies safer, have a chat with some of your local riggers or contact your association or federation for more details. See you next time on Blue Skies Fun Days. Just a quick note to our skydiving family. Blue Skies Fun Days is here to help our family grow, have fun in the sky and to do it safely. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell and tell your friends about the lessons we have on offer to help everyone become better skydivers. For more tips and techniques, click subscribe.